Housing affordability is one of the key economic issues for many Europeans. Particularly in large cities, younger households have to devote an ever-increasing uh, share of their income to rental expenses, and they are finding it much harder to buy housing than older generations did. In this context, policies that constrain the access to credit of young, lower-income households are frequently heavily contested. This can be a monetary policy interest rate rise, but this can also be borrower-based macroprudential policy, policy measures, by which I mean policies that restrict the amount of credit that a certain individual or household can get, depending on their income or depending on their wealth. We started working on this project because we wanted to understand the distributional consequences of these policies and we wanted to understand how can we at the same time protect financial stability and foster housing affordability. So our paper studies an interaction between the rental and housing markets that occurs whenever you uh, introduce a credit constraint in the housing market. And in particular, we take the case of the introduction of macroprudential rules uh, in Ireland in 2015 that impose maximum leverage constraints on households who enter into a mortgage. Now, a natural and indeed an intended consequence of this is to uh, prevent households from becoming homeowners uh, if they can only do so by taking out excessive leverage. So those households end up getting pushed back into the rental market. Now, what we say is that that's fine as long as the rental market can sort of frictionlessly absorb those households. If it can't, you're going to cause disruptions in the rental market that you probably didn't intend. So in particular, if you have a rental market that's characterized by lots of smaller landlords who own one or two properties, then to increase the supply of rental accommodation in that market, you're going to need to pull in new landlords. And those landlords may be less suited to being uh, landlords than the existing pool of landlords, and so they're going to need extra compensation in the form of higher rents. Uh, and so that's what we find happened in Ireland, both empirically and in the context of a quantitative macro model, which is that rents rose and the home ownership rate dropped. So those are the aggregate implications. There are also in implications for inequality, because we, when we look at welfare losses across the population, we find that those losses are not evenly distributed. So in particular, we see that the, those households most negatively affected are the young and the low to middle income, because they're most likely to be in the rental market and have to suffer the higher rental costs, but also they're the ones who are most likely to want to leverage up past the now new uh, regulatory maximum leverage constraint. Uh, conversely, uh, those who are on the older side, who have already bought their house, and even more so those who are landlords, are actually more likely to gain from the implementation of this measure. So this mechanism is triggered whenever you implement direct sort of rationing of credit in the form of a cap on maximum leverage, but it can also happen whenever you see an increase in the cost of that credit, for example, when you uh, see changes in monetary policy. So the same thing is happening, it becomes more costly to access the credit, more difficult for uh, renters to become homeowners, they're pushed back into the rental market and they need to be accommodated in that market by pulling in new landlords, which requires higher rents. So we derive two main policy implications from our work. First, macroprudential policies that restrict the access to credit are not cost-free. They are imposing a burden mostly on young, lower income renters, not only because they cannot access a mortgage, but also because they pay higher rents in equilibrium. The second policy implication is for the conduct of monetary policy. Our model provides a rationale for why uh, increasing the policy rate might increase rents. Therefore, in times of high inflation, when the ECB raises interest rates, it cools down the economy and it reduces inflation in most other goods, but it might actually increase housing inflation, thus posing a challenge for, uh, as a monetary policymaker. Our conclusion is that the monetary authority should pay attention to developments in the housing market when taking policy decisions.